Good evening and welcome to Let's Talk Tuesday. I am Pastor G, excited about being here with you tonight. I am excited about the word of God. Let's pray. Let's get right into it. Lord God, in the master's name of Jesus, we come to lift you up on this night. We come to praise your name. We come to exalt you, Lord God. We thank you that you are the God of answered prayers. We thank you that you are the God of enough. We thank you that you are the God that give us all of you. You don't give us yourself in pieces, but you allow us to lay up against you, Lord God. You allow us to fill your heart be. Lord God. And so we thank you on tonight, Lord God. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are distinguishing facts versus truth, Lord God, that we might know who we are, that we might know what we have access to. We thank you for that now. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. 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 And so tonight we are going to continue on from Sunday. If you miss Sunday service, you can catch it on YouTube or on our Facebook page. But where I want to do a quick review so that we can get to the part that we did not get to on Sunday. And so we're remaining free from the facts. And so on Sunday, we talked about a fact is a thing that is known or proven to be true. And the truth is a verified or indisputable fact, which means it's unable to be challenged or denied. And so we went through the various things on remaining free from um, the facts. And the first thing that we said was receive your freedom because John 8 36 says this, who the son has set free is free indeed. And so if you've been set free, you want to hold on to your freedom. You do not want to go back into bondage. You do not want to go back into the old, but you want to keep progressing and moving forward in all of the things of God. And so when we remain free, we understand that our self-worth is high up there. You know, we are made in God's image. And when we take that on, when we realize who we really are and the power that we actually have, we won't allow ourselves to go back in bondage. And most importantly, we won't allow anyone else to put us back in bondage. Number two was to forgive yourself. You know, sometimes in this thing called life, when we make mistakes, we have a tendency to condemn ourselves. Satan doesn't have to do it. We do it ourselves. But you've got to know that when you make a mistake, it's just that. It's a mistake, but you got to learn from it. But here is the good thing about God. God doesn't allow us to make mistakes too long. And so I like to think about it like this. You guys know that I love food, right? So we're going to talk about food. So you know how like if you go to Krispy Kreme, right? And you walk in and you the, the red light is on so you know the donuts are hot. So all you do is you smell the mm -mm goodness, right? And you walk in and you, you might see, based on which door you come in, you might see the production going on where it's going, you know, the, the uh, donuts are going up and coming back around based on what door you comes in. But this is what I want you to get. Behind the scene, when they're doing getting those donuts ready, it's a conveyor belt. And so the donuts are on a conveyor belt and they're just going on. And then the nice ice and all that sugar that we like, it's dropped on there, right? Now, we don't know if a donut gets missed because it's out of alignment. Hear what I'm saying. We're just like those donuts. They're, we're on a conveyor belt. We're going around and we're, you know, on there. Now, get this. If there's a mistake in Krispy Kreme, we as the customers, we never know about it. If there's an um something that gets out of alignment, there's a supervisor back there that will press pause, that will push a button to make sure it bumps the donuts back in alignment so that everything is running smoothly. See, that's what happens with us. When we make a mistake, somehow Jesus knows how to push that pause button. Nobody else sees what's going on, but he knows how to bump us back into alignment that when we get on that conveyor belt, that sugar, that blessing, that favor that we're supposed to get, we're right back in line. So you cannot settle in self-condemnation. You've got to forgive yourself because God has already forgiven you. This is how you remain, you know, from the fact that you know what the truth is. The truth, the fact is I made a mistake, but the truth is Jesus is Lord. The fact is that I didn't cross every T and I didn't dot every I and I'm guilty of what they said but the truth is that the charge has been dropped that Jesus has paid for my sins and so you've got to get this you've got to know a fact versus a truth and that we live in the truth the third thing 
second was making sure that you have an accountability partner. This is important because you want to have somebody that's like-minded. You don't need somebody that's going to bring you down. You don't need someone that's going to keep remembering or reminding you about your past. You don't live there anymore. You've moved on into the future. You're going forward in this thing. And so you need people around you who are moving forward. You need people who are going to challenge you. People who are going to encourage you. Someone that's going to be a great counsel, counselor giving you godly wisdom, not worldly wisdom. Remember, worldly wisdom is facts. <laughs> But wisdom that comes from God is the truth. And so you need people like that around you. And then the one that I did not get to on um, Sunday that we're going to spend a little time with is number four. Number four is to remain true, to remain free from the facts and live in the truth. You've got to fast and pray. Write that down. I must fast and pray. And so fasting and praying is what's important for the life of a believer. So what is fasting? Fasting is just this. It's an intentional denial of the flesh to strengthen your spirit. I'm going to say that again so that you can write this down. Fasting is an intentional denial of the flesh to strengthen your spirit. Fasting is an intentional search for God with your whole heart. So you are making a conscious decision that I want to get closer to God. I've got to be near him. I've got to sit at his feet. I've got to lean up against him and feel his heartbeat. I've got to bring my thoughts up to his thoughts. I've got to bring my ways up to his ways. I told you that Minister Aliyah likes to say, crucify the flesh. And this is what happens when I fast. I crucify the flesh. I'm now in control, meaning the spirit man is now in control. The flesh is not controlling you. See, that's what was happening when we were in the world before we renewed our minds. You know, we were having a good time in that sin. At least I hope you were, because if you weren't, I don't know why you didn't come to Christ any sooner. I enjoyed what I was doing. That's why I stayed in it. You know, sin will take you further than you want to go, and it'll keep you way longer than you want to stay. But when you begin to fast, you're able to crucify that flesh and so now you're able to say no during those times when you would say yes now you're able to cast down those thoughts see the thought even if it attempts to creep into your mind now because you're fasting now because you're doing all these things you've got the right people around you you've forgiven yourself you know you've made a conscious effort to do this thing now you're able to cast down those thoughts or anything that tries to rise up against Against the knowledge of God and the power of God. This is what fasting does. And so when we look at um, the definition, not the definition, when we look at Matthew 6, 16, it says this, moreover, when you fast, be not as hypocrites of a hypocrites of a um, sad countenance telling everybody because that's your reward. But I want to go back to it says, moreover, when you fast, which says this, we ought to fast. Moreover, when you fast, it doesn't mean that we only fast once a year. See, that's what baby Christians do. You fast at the beginning of the year because that's what your pastor told you to do. But when you become mature in this thing, when you get to know Jesus better than you know yourself, you realize that I got to fast and pray all the time. That is what you do as a believer. The more you fast, the more you crucify your flesh. The more you fast, the closer you get to Jesus. The more more you fast, you'll be able to hear Jesus just like you hear my voice right now because you are crucifying the flesh and now other voices cannot get in. You can't even hear them because they have no voice anymore. They have no power anymore. So when I fast, which means I ought to be fasting all of the time. And then it says this, when you fast, don't be of no sad, you know, no sad countenance. You know, every time we fast during the beginning of the year, I hear people saying, oh my God, I'm so tired. I'm... That's baby fire. 
Because when we fast, it ought to be a time of celebration because I'm crucifying my flesh, which means I'm really getting to be more like God. Remember in Genesis at the beginning, he says that I'm making you in my image, that I'm giving you the same authority. And so if I'm being in God's image, I'm not complaining. I'm not going around talking about, you know, a sad countenance because that I'm fasting. No, I'm excited about this thing because now. Now when I fast, I send more demons on the run. I'm doing more work for the kingdom. I'm making a difference in the kingdom of God. And so everybody at work should know that you're fasting because you just keep talking about, oh, you know we on this fast. No, you they should feel some power coming from you when you walk past. They want to be asking you what's going on with you because something is different about you. See, this is what happens because see now I'm learning now about the facts versus the truth and I know that the truth is that when I fast I get more power when I fast I'm able to do those supernatural things see it's time out for talking about the supernatural no we gotta be about the supernatural we're supernatural beings so we gotta stop talking and saying I'm a supernatural being but we gotta do the things that supernatural beings do and supernatural beings we fast we pray we speak in our heavenly language Language. We fight with the weapons of warfare. We don't fight with worldly things. We don't fight with revenge. We don't fight with retaliation. We fight with the word of God. Amen. So fasting and praying is what you do or what we do um, when we want to remain free from the facts. So let's talk about prayer. This is what we do. And so we should be praying more than, thank you Lord for waking me up. Uh, now I lay me down to sleep and I pray to God at your age that you are not still saying that. Okay, Pastor Brianna looked at me, so I guess I wasn't supposed to say that like that. But I'm, I'm just saying, when we mature, we don't continue to say those kind of prayers. And so if that's you, no worries, I'm going to help you out. I'm going to um, go through the Acts prayer method. If there's somebody that needs help with how to pray. And so it's Acts, it's adoration, it's confession, it's thanksgiving, and it's supplication. And so Acts is adoration. It's considered the most noble form of prayer. And adoration is showing deep love and respect. It's showing worship. So Psalm 101 three says this it says bless the lord oh my soul and all that is within me and so i will bless the lord and so i'm doing adoration i'm letting god know just how much i love him you know god you're great god you're good god you are the sovereign one god you have no rivals god you have no equals there is nobody that compared to you god you are the lifter of my head god you are the lover of my soul god you are king of kings and you are Lord of Lords, see, I'm giving adoration, and when I begin to give adoration, see, nothing else can get in. I'm not thinking about what's going on. I'm not thinking about my circumstances, but I'm giving adoration unto my God, unto my Jesus, and what happens when you give adoration, it causes Jesus to just swoop down on you. You know how you are if you hear somebody talking about you in a good way. You know, you want to move a little closer, like, what they say? You know, let me make so I heard them. So when you begin to give adoration to God, he comes closer to you because he wants to hear what you have to say about him. And so this is how we start off prayer. If we're, you know, in a state where we're not used to praying or, you know, if we want to mature from the now I lay me down to sleep prayer, this is how we do that. We begin by giving adoration. And let me tell you, nobody can give adoration for you like you can because only you know what God has done for you. And then it's confession. First John 1 9 says, when we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so then I begin to confess, Lord, please forgive me for uh, the thoughts that I had on today. Lord, please forgive me for cussing that person out because they cut in, cut in the lane in front of me. I begin to confess my sins to God. And you know, the great thing, when you confess them, he doesn't you know, he forgives you. And
and he doesn't even remember. That's why I love Jesus. You know, people will remind you of your faults all the time, but not Jesus. Jesus says, once you have confessed that thing, it's a done deal. I don't even remember it, so don't come back to me and talk about it. You know, that's what we do. We bring it up, and Jesus is like, I don't know what you're talking about, because I forgot about that. And so this is what we do. We confess, and then we have thanksgiving. First Thessalonians 5, 18, and all things, you hear that? And all things give thanks. This is the will of God concerning your life. We want to always give thanks. Lord God, I thank you for waking me up this morning. Lord God, I thank you that no weapon formed against me can prosper. Lord God, I thank you that I don't look like what I've been through, that there's no residue of it. Lord God, I thank you that I'm in my right mind and I have all my faculties. Lord God, I thank you that I'm not lining up at a shelter on tonight, but I have a place to lay my head. Lord God, I thank you that not only do I have food to eat, but I got a choice of what I want to eat, Lord God. Lord God, I thank you that when I walk in the closet that there's a choice, there's an array, there's a plethora of things that I can choose to wear. Lord God, I thank you that I live in a country where I can praise you freely, Lord God. God, I thank you that I got a tithe and not only do I have a tithe, I got an offering and not only do I have an offering, I got seed to sow. Lord God, I just want to thank you. Lord God, I just want to thank you for Jesus. Lord God, I thank you one that, I, that I didn't self-destruct Lord God, I thank you that you stopped me from self-destructing. God, I thank you from delivering me from me. Not about anything else, but thank you for delivering me from me. That your word has changed my mindset. That your word has transformed me into your image. That I don't answer to the things that I used to answer to. That I don't have a desire for the things that I used to have a desire to. Lord God, I just want to give you thanks. God, I thank you that I got a church home. God, I thank you that I'm saved and sealed to the day of redemption. Lord God, I want to thank you that I got a voice that I can speak clearly, Lord God, that I can praise your name, Lord God. I thank you that I got limbs that I can do a boot praise whenever I feel like it. God, I just want to thank you on today. God, I just want to thank you that there is breath in my body, that you breathe the breath of life into me. God, I want to thank you that last night wasn't my last night. God, I just want to thank you that I got home safely, Lord God, that you allow me to go to and fro. God, I want to thank you on this night, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. See, this is what we do when we pray. And so we, you know, we come and we give adoration and we come and we confess and then we come and we do thanksgiving. And then the last thing that we do is supplication to ask for what you yeah. want. Not what you need, because he already said, I'm going to supply all of your needs. He knows what your needs are. So now, you have an opportunity to tell God what you want. First John 5, 14 and 15 says, This confidence we have in him, that if we ask according to his will, he hears us. That's the key, that I'm asking according to his will, that I'm asking for things that he want me to, wants me to have, not for things that I shouldn't have. So like, I can't ask for somebody else's spouse because that's not the will of God. I can't ask for those type of things, but I have to ask for things according to his will. He hears us. And if he hears whatsoever we ask, we know our petitions, petitions are granted, which means I have confidence in my God. Remember, he says that once he says a thing, it's a done deal. He even tells us that we can decree a thing and that it shall be established. And so when God says it, listen, he's not a man that can lie or repent. God doesn't change his mind like people. So if he told you that you are healed, you are healed. You just got to walk this thing out. See, as you're waiting on your healing, see, when I wait, I worship. When I wait, I grow stronger. When I wait, I get to allow God to do what he needs to do. See, sometimes God is still working on that thing. You know, when you can't see it, when you can't feel it, but he's working. So this is what happened when I'm waiting. But here's the guarantee. Here's the truth. The fact is they have diagnosed me with something, but the truth is that I'm healed, and so it doesn't matter how long it's going to take, I stand on the truth that by his stripes I'm already healed, I stand on the truth that he is the Lord thy God that healeth me, I stand on the truth that there's no weapon formed against me can prosper, I stand on the truth, I stand on the truth, he says this, that I will 
restore health back into you because I removed sickness away from you. Then he get look, God is so bad. He says, what in the world can you imagine against me? He said, I will bring that thing to an utter end. And then he said, affliction cannot rise up the second time. See, that's the truth that you stand on. I don't care what the prognosis is. I don't care what the doctor just said. We go on by the truth of what Jesus said, that you are already healed, that it's a done deal. Don't you know that healing is one of your daily benefits? No, I'm listed in Psalm 103. You got to check it out. See, you got to read the word. Remember I told you on Sunday, you got to read your Bible so you can see what God said, so you can get what God said and that you can say it and you can see it and then you won't say it's mm -hmm good like he did back in Genesis. And so this is what you got to do. So when you read your Bible, it's just like when you were at work, you knew your benefits to a T. And if something was wrong, what did you do? You go to HR, you look up your HR specialist and you tell them, wait a minute, it's a problem here. So whenever something is coming up against the benefits that are listed in Psalm 103, 1 to 8, now you got to call up your heavenly HR specialist and say, wait a minute, something is wrong here and allow that HR specialist in heaven to dictate what's going to happen. See, you already know that you are healed. And so you got to get up from where you are. You got to start confessing that you are healing. Don't you know you have the power to say how your day is going to go? So when you wake up in the morning, before you put one foot on the floor, when you open up your eyes and realize that God has given you another day, that is the time for you to now begin to confess how this day is going to go. See, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This day is going to be speck while amazing. This is the day that the manifestation of all of my prayers are going to be answered. This is the day that favor will fall upon me. This is the day of the supernatural blessing and a miraculous turnaround. See, you've got to begin to open up your mouth. This is what you say during suffocation. God, I want a speck while amazing day. God, I want to experience healing in my body. God is over for more month than money. You said that wealth and riches live in my house. You said that you take pleasure in the prosperity of your servant. See, you begin to tell God what you want. Glory to God. This is the last point in remaining free from the facts. In remaining free from the facts and closing, you've got to remember that everybody's not going to like this transformation that you're going through. See, some people want to see you stuck. They want to see you broken because they can control you. They can manipulate you. But you got to confess out of your mouth, the manipulation days are over. The days when you control me, they are over. I done have messed around and woke up. I know who I am. I know the power and authority that lies in me and it lies in my mouth. And so I can speak again a thing and I can change the situation. I can change the circumstance why? Because I'm now fully aware of the fact versus the truth. And the truth is, because Jesus reigns, because Jesus got up, because Jesus lives, I can have, do, and say whatever I want as long as it's in the will of God. Amen. Hey, listen, that's Let's Talk Tuesday for today. Hey, 